everyone. Welcome back to our third painting class. Oh, there we are. Okay. Let's start again. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our third painting class. What? Oh. I think I know what's going on. Let's go talk to Quinn. Okay, he should be around here. I think he's right here. Quinn, what are you doing? Maintenance, of course. Checking to see the lights work. Of course they work. Can't you see the lights are on? And what if the lights go out while you're blinking? Have you thought of that? Have you now? Well, I'm blinking. I never really thought of that. It's ridiculous. Why don't you go fix the bathroom or something? I'm off then. In a moment, I'll put up here the photo of the painting we're going to paint today. And while I'm gone, make sure to draw it. But before we do that, I wanted to show you this product by Amberson. It's called the Artist Panel. And it's made of unprimed basswood with a little edge on it. And the reason I'm showing you this, this first, I know usually I review a product at the end of our class. But the reason I'm doing it first this time is because we're actually going to paint our painting on this today. That way afterwards I can review it for you. So while I take a little break, go ahead and do your drawing. Okay, we're getting ready to paint our tulip, but we need to mix our colors ahead of time. Let me let you know what I have. Titanium white, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow orange, cadmium red light, cadmium red, phthalo red rose, alizarin crimson, doxycyan purple, and ultramarine blue. So we're going to, with this class, we're going to concentrate on the petal itself, the, the, the flower itself, uh, not so much the leaves. So I will mix the colors ahead of time and we'll do that in fast speed. begin our tulip. So we will start towards the back of the petals. We'll take this red, put it up here. You notice I'm leaving the edges alone because the edges are just a little bit darker. And we'll take that darker color, put it along here. And like I've done in my previous videos, I will, we will leave the blending till later. Okay, that one was easy enough. We'll go on to the next one. This painting really is very good practice. And the reason why is because of the play 
in of reds. That is, I'm referring to cool reds and warm reds. What's the difference? Well, the cool reds are reds that tend a little more towards the blues, and the warm reds towards reddish orange. So throughout the whole painting, we're going to go back and forth on those colors. Again, I left the spots open for the darker colors. Now I'm putting them in where they belong. Here we go. Great. We're moving right along. Let's see a little bit of dark here. Let's move on to the third one. Top right. This one, it goes up, makes a little turn. And there's a highlight right there, right there. So we'll leave that space open. Come down, make it darker as it goes towards the bottom. Even darker right there. Now we said there's a highlight up here. So let's put in the highlight. I see a little bit of a highlight there too. Right there too. Oh, we're doing very good. We will continue on with the left pedal. On the left pedal, you notice towards the left side that we do have a little bit of purples. Purples, purples, so we'll, and violets. So we'll put them towards the left side here. And we'll make sure to blend them nicely in a little bit. I will continue with our reds. Sometimes you see I'm painting almost bands of color. The colors will carry through a particular section, almost like a band. Sometimes I'll do little stripes like that because I don't want to cover the area too much with a particular color. But I know when I blend it, it'll be just enough paint. Now let's put some warmer, some warm reds up here in this area. And we have an edge of light right there at the edge of this petal. Let's put a little bit of shading. Shading.
you notice how I was to make blend the colors ahead of time and there's advantages in that the advantage might be that it gives you more time to concentrate on painting instead of stopping and painting and stopping and mixing stopping and mixing you get to I think it adds to the enjoyment of painting that doesn't mean that the colors I mix ahead of time that they're perfect I can still adjust them along the way lighten them, darken them, intensify them, tone them down, whatever it may be. Alright, we got the second side, uh, the left side done. We will continue on to the middle petal. Everything seems to be going very, very smoothly. And on top of the middle petal we have a very cool pink. Beautiful pink color right there. This color is achieved with the Thalo Red Rose. If you don't have that color, I would recommend that you buy it. There's many. It'll help you mix beautiful pinks, violets, purples. I meant to use a wider brush, but this is working just fine, really. See, you see here, I'm using a warm red. That's what I was saying, that this, this is a wonderful practice of going between cool colors and warm colors. Now remember we did this little edging earlier. We want it to stand out. So that means to stand out we have to put some contrast. And by putting contrast then we darken the color leading right up to it. Let's do this little part, center part here. I decided to paint this flower because this is my favorite flower, truthfully. Even though where I live, it's very short-lived. I live in the desert. Okay, as we're heading towards the bottom, we need to begin adding some shading. Right here along this edge, we need shade. Along the center, we need shade. And we're going to start getting very dark. I've said it before in my paintings that when you're painting whatever it is, 
try that your brush strokes follow the shape of the object. And that's what I've done here, you notice the curve that way, the curve this way, the curve of the petal coming this way. See, the strokes need to follow your shape. Good, we're done with the center one pretty much. Let's move on to the right pedal. The right pedal seems a little more complicated, but I think we'll do okay. This one has some very nice folds in it. Let's begin with the folds just because I don't want to bypass them. At times, you notice when I did that line how it flowed very well. When you do that, lines, longer lines like that, sometimes you have to thin your paint a little bit, just like what I'm doing right here. So you have to thin your paint just a little extra with whatever medium you use. It might be linseed oil or thinner or a combination of both. Some people put a little bit of varnish in there. Whatever medium you use, thin it just a little extra. It's a beautiful little, let's color right now that I'm applying, look at that. It's a great color. That's just a touch of, it's red with just a touch of orange in it. Some really nice violets and purples in this painting. Okay, now there's a little wonderful curve right there. Needs a little shading towards the center of that area. A little bit of violets and purples here. All this looks unfinished, but we will blend it in just a little while. I will start working from the top down to make some extra colors as running out. Okay, we wanted this line to stand out. Well, it's not going to stand out if we don't have contrast. Let's put contrast right next to it. Or change its value that is light and dark. Very nice. Towards the bottom we'll have some shading. It 
if you're following along with me, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Sometimes you have to teach your eye to look for color. Most beginning artists would just take a red and put white on it and or put black in it to lighten and darken but as you see the eye prefers to see a variety of colors instead of just taking one and lightening it and darkening it. Now we're moving over here and right here there's a big shadow and then we'll feather it to the right so it'll blend well later. Hello. Hello. I have a complaint against Quinn. Again? Well, he turned off all the lights on me during the opening, and then he t took off all the handles in the bathroom. Are you crying? No. Sometimes my eyes sweat. But what I'm asking is, are you going to do something about it? As we speak, I already taken care of it. Well, okay, thanks. Okay, we're going to start putting in some darker colors here. A little bit of highlight carries around. Right before you're ready to blend, look over your painting and see if you missed anything very obvious. So that's what I'm going to do now. Look over and see if I've missed anything obvious. Mm, I could put a little more shading here. Right there. This could be a little darker right here. This could be a little darker right here. And now not only darker, but maybe some areas could be a little lighter too. Like this area here. All right, highlight, highlight, little tiny bit of highlight right here. And uh, I think we're ready to blend it all together. Okay, let's blend it. So to blend, you take your brush, we're going to take a a wider brush this time. Clean my brush. For this process to work, as you may remember from the previous videos, clean your brush and we're going to keep it as flat as possible on the board. Not like we're not gonna going to blend like this, but keep it very low and we're going to turn it and blend at different angles. 
If it starts to pick up too much paint, then we will clean our brush and continue. Just saw something I didn't like. There we go. Okay, so let's begin.
we're going to now review the Ampersand product. As you know, as I told you earlier, I was going to use their artist panel. It's made of basswood. What I did first was I covered it with four coats of gesso, alternating each one as it dried. And usually after that I sand it, but it was so smooth I didn't have to sand it. What do I like about the board? What I like about it is that again, it was sanded wonderfully smooth. You notice the corners here, perfect. They're not rough by any means. Nice sides. There isn't any glue oozing out of them. The product is made wonderfully and it accepted the paint wonderfully. This is a really nice company, Ampersand. They have something for every artist. They have aqua boards, canvas panels, clay board, pastel board, scratch boards even, boards for encaustics. I've been working with Ampersand for a long time now, for many years, and one thing I ha do appreciate about them is that they're sticklers for quality. So get to know their products. In fact, they might be a start of a great creative relationship. I give Ampersand products my stamp of approval. I will place their link right well, that was our third class, so I want to thank everybody for spending a little time with us. I hope you created something wonderful and learned something too. And if you did like the class, make sure to share it with everyone, all your friends, okay? Sharing is caring. Also, um, make sure to subscribe up here, right there, if you haven't done so yet. And before I leave, I wanted to just uh, apologize because at the beginning of the video, as you know, Quinn kept turning off the lights, but I think I set him in place after I complained. And I think, it, I think Quinn realizes that we humans... Oh, hold on a moment. There we go. That we humans are superior. <laughs>